My name is Michelle Scherer. I'm a marine biologist. So hopefully we'll get a chance to also um, find some black grouper. Dr. Michael Nemeth and I are doing research on grouper species in western Puerto Rico, including Bajo de Sico. Bajo de Sico is actually a really great site because we have multiple grouper species spawning there. This is an offshore seamount, which is actually an underwater mountain, and it serves as an attractant to a lot of species around it. Bajo de Sico is the only place in the U.S. Caribbean, Puerto Rico shelf, where Nassau grouper still aggregate to spawn. Most of the grouper species, including the Nassau grouper, have really declined their population numbers because when they aggregate to spawn, they're really easy to catch. They've been overfished in some places, and their populations are so depressed that they are candidates for the endangered species list. We are trying to identify how many grouper are coming into the aggregation site, and we also want to know what their behavior is when they are going to spawn. The sounds that these grouper make are very distinctive, and that gives us a tool to be able to identify which species are present at the spawning site. Down there we have hydrophones, which are underwater microphones, which are really sensitive to the low frequency sounds that they make. But in order to make sure we hear them when they're not making these sounds, we have a secondary complement in which we're using acoustic tags, which we insert inside the belly of the fish. And once these fish have this chip inside them, or this acoustic transmitter, they can be picked up at our different receivers we have throughout the bank. We're able to record information over a long period of time without actually being in the water. Even though we can't hear them when they're making their courtship sounds, we can still detect them with this technology in different parts of the bank as they move towards and away from their spawning site. My name is Senor Pinedo. I'm the vice chair for, for the Caribbean Fishery Management Council. Bajo is a very important area for us. It's a nursing ground for many species. It's the habitat of many other species. We have to protect the corals also. The most difficult part is ignorance. Sometimes you get uh, young people, recreational people, tourists who don't know what they're doing and they go, they spear fish, and when they come back, they say, look what I got, what is this? And, uh, and it really bothers us down here because we are uh, engaged in a real battle to protect that species. We've heard a lot of stories of how Nassau grouper used to be the most common fish on every reef here in Puerto Rico. It's been commercially extinct since the 80s. People can't make a living off Nassau grouper anymore, not only because it's regulated, but there just aren't enough. So now they're moving on to smaller species of grouper and other species of snapper, and even parrotfish, which is really sad because once we eliminate the top parts of the food web, then we're going into the medium parts, and eventually all we'll have left is lionfish. And that's one of the special things about these multi-species spawning aggregations. Some of them we found have been fished almost entirely out, and when you protect them, they'll come back. If you are able to take the fishing pressure off of these spawning fish at those critical times of the year, they will recover. What's been the downfall for some of these fish that they only get together one time during a year and only in this spot, and so you know boats can go and come back to the same place every year just like the fish, that can also be their salvation because we know where to go, we can target our protections at those areas, and then we can watch those species recover. The Bajo de Sico area in particular is protected during six months of the year. That is, from October to March, there is no fishing on the reef. However, this closed fishing season needs to incorporate the spawning months of all the species that aggregate there to spawn. Recent studies have actually shown that the spawning season is extending, so perhaps it would be wise to shift those six months closure to make sure we include all the different species that spawn. It's like the lost city down there. The structure is there, the habitat's incredible, the coral is incredible. There are not that many fish. 
but they were there. Ask any fisherman, they'll tell you how abundant these fish were there. Turn the radio on. I got my line. Okay. My name is Edwin Fon. Everybody call me Pauco, the fisherman. And for 50 years, I take grouper, any kind of grouper. Yo he buceado alrededor de la isla. Y este es el sitio que jamás se me olvidara por la belleza. Era como si tú estuvieses buceando en una pecera gigante. You hear from the fishermen that they would like to get back to the old days when fish were much more abundant. Many of the fishermen know what needs to be done, but there's a lot of thought about if I don't take the fish, somebody else is going to take it. We need to go beyond that with the fishermen so that we can all get back to healthier fisheries like they were in the past. Nassau Grouper, uh, it was really hit very hard. And um, in order for them to uh, come back, bounce back, they need aggregations up to a thousand individuals. So you need a large enough area that they can thrive and they cannot be uh, fished. If we could really get the no-take regulations enforced, uh, there are various other species that could benefit beside the Nassau grouper. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because it's such an important landmark, Bajo de Sico is attracting all kinds of wildlife, oh. including the humpback whales. But because they come down here to breed and to mate, they really need protected sites. And what's now um, increasingly uh, important is ecosystem-based fishery management. And this takes a holistic look at the entire ecosystem. So for example, instead of just setting catch limits on the red hind or the black grouper, you're looking at the ecosystem role that these fish play. So it's important to protect fish like the Nassau grouper, which are at the top of that food web of the marine ecosystem, but it's also important to protect the little guys, the forage fish, or the, the foundation of that food web. I think a lot of people don't really understand how critical it is if we start losing species in the marine environment. There's some really hopeful stories from other places in the Caribbean. For example, Belize has 11 Nassau grouper spawning sites protected. Uh, Cayman has one of the largest spawning aggregations of Nassau grouper, where approximately 3,000 grouper just come together to spawn every year in one place. It's a story of hope for Bajo de Sico that we could eventually have that change towards a more positive trend in the populations of Nassau grouper.